Good morning, Colin Izzard here, a lay minister in Mill Hill. Once again, pleased to be part of the daily prayer cycle that the Oblate community provides for us. Well, today is the last day of November. Where has the year gone? On Sunday evening, I was privileged to be part of an Advent carol service. We had readings and beautiful pieces of music hymns, special sacred music. And while this was all going on, I looked across and saw the Advent candle stand prepared with just one purple candle lit so far. And then I suddenly looked at the empty stable scene by the altar. And then it really hit me, almost 10 months since Candlemas, but it seems like no time at all. But now as we prepare, let us opt out of concerns, of time, and the focus on our Heavenly Father, who brings about the Incarnation in this season of Advent. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. One of the joys of gathering an augmented church choir is we can tackle the more adventurous music. So we actually had two recordings of a CD from Arias in Handel's Messiah. But then as a choir, we all got to sing and the glory of the Lord. You probably know that chorus. It's a pretty good one. And the great thing was for once, we actually had more than one person sing our alto or tenor. But I want you to listen today to words from Psalm 19. Because when I read these words, I feel like I could almost be singing them, especially when I think of the Messiah. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another, and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language, and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words to the end of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the ends of the heavens, and runs to the very end again and there is nothing hidden from its heat. Now this is centuries old writing, but it does not diminish over the passage of time. The psalmist fully appreciates God as architect of all that we see and know and feel. We feel like we have inner knowledge indeed. And sometimes that's our problem. Because we know and we rejoice but it cannot only be known to us. Otherwise, our Christianity would soon die away with the generations. Now also in the readings for today, we have the calling of the early disciples in St Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father, and followed him. But as Romans tells us, how are they to call on one in whom they've not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they've never heard? Mission is necessary, and our challenge is to bring it to life in our time. Now, today, last day of November, as all of Scotland knows, it's the feast day of St Andrew. 
Andrew, the first disciple. Because in St John's Gospel, he's the one that fetches Simon. He's also said to be the one that founded the church in Byzantium, in modern Turkey, known through the years as Constantinople and now Istanbul. And I don't know if any of you have been to Istanbul, but you know, you can see the great doors and paintings in a church that predates the, ha the Hagia Sophia Mosque. Typically, Andrew is a patron saint in many lanes. He's patron saint of Ukraine and Russia, Cyprus, Georgia, Romania, and many more. He was martyred in about AD 60, and he was crucified, which was still then an unusual death. But rather than being nailed, he was bound to the cross, and the cross was set as an X the Saltire Cross, and this is reflected in the blue and white diagonal flag, which adds richness to the Union Jack. Andrew was a great Christian saint, and obviously very effective. There are saints among us too, people who quietly reach out in the love of Christ to tend to others' needs. We're not all wordsmiths, nor given to declaiming Christ on street corners, but when we reach out to others, the love, the love of Christ within us conveys a far more powerful message. There'll always be a place for those seeking to make the scriptures know more widely. But just as creation declares the handiwork of God, we need to play our part by being and doing and reflecting and giving thanks. So as we bring our time together to a close, let us say our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. And a prayer to close from Cardinal Suhard. To be a witness does not consist in engaging in propaganda, nor even in stirring people up, but in being a living mystery. It means to live in such a way that one's life would not make sense if God did not exist. So let us, like the great saints, seek to be a true witness for Christ. Amen.